If you're ever looking to put the home button on your phone screen virtually, this video is going to go through and show you exactly how to do that, give you more information about how to configure it. So we'll definitely go through all of that. So you want to make sure you stay till the end so you don't miss anything. We're going to go over extra options with that, not just setting it up, but how to get it to do certain things. Welcome everybody. I'm Kevin with HelpfulTutorials.net. If you're new here and you like iPhone fixes, tutorials, app discovery, and carrier conversations, please do me a favor and smack that subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about the virtual button you can put on your phone. Some people miss it and they get the newer phone and they want it added so they can go ahead and tap on it instead of flicking up from the bottom. To be honest, I think flicking up is actually pretty easy and it didn't take me too long to get used to it. But I have ran into some people that have had a newer iPhone for a while and they're still not used to it. And maybe this will go through and help them obtain the button virtually and this could help them out. Also, this works really good for older phones that do have the button and the button's not working anymore. If you've broken the phone in that area dropped it or if it just stopped working this will definitely help you get through and use the phone until you can get it repaired to be honest a lot of times what happens is the button actually gets small dust molecules underneath and when you're pushing it it's just not connecting correctly so if you take it to the apple store and it's still under warranty they'll be able to go ahead and take that out and pretty much blow canned air in there and now clean out that area and the button will be responsive as well. This does also happen on the volume buttons. I have it happening on my iPad right now and I had it for a long time. I just have never got around to getting it taken care of, but it does happen from time to time because dust can get in there. So as the phones get newer, it's harder and harder for it to get in there because they're making them tighter and tighter. But that is something that could happen. So let me go through and show you how this works. We're going to go ahead and choose settings here. Once we choose settings, we're going to choose accessibility. Now that we're in accessibility, we're going to go ahead and choose touch. And to turn the button on, we want to go ahead and turn assistive touch on. We'll tap it once, it'll come here. We'll go ahead and turn on, and the button appears. So there's a few things the buttons can do. First, we wanna go ahead and set up what the single tap does. If you look underneath this, it says single tap open menu. That's not what you're gonna want it to do. So you're gonna go ahead and tap that, and you're gonna go ahead and change it to home. Once you change it to home, we can go ahead and go back. So now if you tap it once, it'll go home back to your main screen. If you want to set it up like the other button, you want to choose double tap next. And here you want to choose app switcher because when you double tapped it, it brought up the apps that are currently open. So now you have that and you can go ahead and go back again. And now you have that set up. You also have long press and 3D touch. It's up to you if you want to configure it that way. You can also create gestures, which I'll show you in a moment. So with the button, you can go ahead and move it around. Once you click on it, just move it and you can put it wherever you want it. Some people do put it down here where it was and you can do that, except sometimes it will get in the way of certain apps. What I've seen people do, let's go ahead and tap it once here. I've seen people remove these four icons on the bottom and just leave that button there. That way it's not in the way when they're on this screen. But when you do go into certain apps, there are things that you may need to tap in that area. Simply grab the button and just move it to the side and that will take care of it. And you can move it back. So I came back into assistive touch. In here you can go ahead and choose create gestures. If you choose that, it's going to basically be like a macro. If you've ever used a macro, all you do is tap the screen to start. So for example, say you wanted to tap three different icons or three different settings 
like there's something to get into, you would tap like once here, once here, and once here. And you can go ahead and hit stop. And now if you hit play, it's going to tap those three things for you. So you could save it. Call it three tap. And now you can go ahead and choose that custom gesture when you like. You would have to set it up. So if you want to do the double tap, you want to change that to open menu. Now, if we double tap, it's going to bring up this menu that we can go ahead and choose things. So we made gestures. They're actually under custom because we created them by ourselves. So choose customs and then you can do pinch 3D touch, double tap or the one we just did three tap. Tap the screen wherever you like and then it starts tapping it. Just something you can do with it, which makes it interesting. You can always swipe to the side and hit delete if you no longer want them. It also has regular gestures if you we have it set to double tap. So if we double tap, it'll bring this up. You choose gestures and then it can use two finger touch, three finger touch, four or five, depending what you wanted to use. And here's home devices, notifications and control center. So if we tap control center, it'll take us to the control center. So this is a great feature. Again, if your button breaks, you could always move it around. Some people put it up top, you know, where it's out of the way, but just mess around with it, experiment, see where it works best for you. If you're not looking at the clock. You can always put it there. And like I said, a lot of people keep it down here as well. Wherever you're not touching much, that's where I would put it. Now you should be able to use the touch even if your phone doesn't have a button or the button is broken. If you'd like to check out some more videos, I have plenty. I'll go through and show you some that I recommend here. I really like to see you over there. Also, I do have a website, helpfultutorials.net, where you can get a free viewing of a secret tips and tricks video. Check it out. It's absolutely free. Thank you so much for the view.